Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another YouTube video with your boy Pollux the Wise. I hope you guys are doing absolutely frog and splendid, taking care of yourselves, and as always, staying safe. Today's episode, we are back with Kingdom Rush Vengeance modding the game on Steam. So, if you guys haven't checked out the other episodes that I've done on this particular series where we mod Kingdom Rush Vengeance, please make sure you do that. Otherwise, a lot of what I'm about to explain won't make sense, but if you guys have been watching those videos and keeping up with them so that you can develop your own mod, well then, hats off to you guys, and I appreciate your guys' views, support, etc., etc. But in any case, ladies and gents, what are we going to be talking about today? We are going to be talking about adding in new tower spots into the game. Now, if you guys have ever taken a look at the maps in Kingdom Rush Vengeance, for the most part, they have some pretty good tower spots, and they have most of them in pretty good strategic choke point areas so you know ones like here that have good path coverage this is a great example of a good tower spot right here you can get lots of different areas over here with these different tower spots on the map but some of them are kind of tightly packed close together so what if there was a way that we could fix this what if we could make tower spots more spaced out better yet what if we could create new tower spots of our own and that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video ladies and gentlemen we are going to be creating our own tower spots and adding them on the map. Now, there is a small caveat to this, and you guys are going to want to keep this in mind when you guys are making your own mods, but I will leave that for your own discretion further on, and I will explain in more detail what I mean very shortly. But first things first, I want to make note of where we're going to be adding in some new tower spots real quick, just on this specific level, just because it's an easy example level that I can quickly add in a new tower spot and then take away. But we're going to try and add a tower spot slightly you know, like above and slightly to the left of this current tower spot here. So like somewhere right here, you know, just like bottom left of this little dwarven statue on the far left side of this drawbridge. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is exit the game. And you're going to go to the same file path that we've basically been going to in each of the starts of uh, these different areas. So excuse me while I get us located there real quick. So this PC, Windows C, colon, in parentheses, program files, in parentheses, x86. And then we'll go down to Steam, Steam Apps. We'll go to Common. And then we'll go to Kingdom Rush Vengeance. Now, you are going to go to KR4. Uh, there's nothing in KR4 underscore PC that we need to edit, thankfully. But we, instead of going into the level modes, we are going to go into the folder known as level. Just simply level. That's it. You're going to see all of these different files here. And basically, inside of each one of these files, well, it says the name of the level, so level, whatever number that level is, underscore data. So in our instance, we are going to be going to level one underscore data. So if we go ahead, we click on this, we get this little, uh, what you call it, opened. And I did not mean to accidentally close the file explorer. Whoops. It's all good, though. But we're going to go ahead and full screen this for our own personal benefit. In any case, um... You guys can see here, it starts us off with this little chunk of code at the top with terrain. Then it goes down to, say, objects, etc., etc. Now, you don't need to really worry about any of this. This is a massive file. So, using the shortcuts that we've discussed in the previous episodes, such as Control plus F key, uh, F as in Frank, is going to be a huge time saver here. Because, yeah, as you guys can see, there's just a ton of code, a ton of different coordinates for all these different things. But no need to worry. I will walk you guys through what you need to do. Basically, we're going to start by doing Control F and searching for tower. And the first result should be highlighted as key towers key. And then underneath that, an array and dictionaries, etc. Now, you're going to see a lot of code just kind of repetitively that looks like this. There's like this little chunk here. And the first miniature chunk underneath this big chunk is going to say holder. And that's going to have a set of position X, Y coordinates. And then underneath that, it's going to have rally point X and Y coordinates. Now, these are two different things. You're going to want to make note of both of them because they're both very important as far as where you put the tower. Now, we're going to be creating a new tower spot to the top left of that area that I just highlighted for you guys earlier. So I'm looking for a couple tower spots that have, relatively speaking, the same Y coordinate. That's going to be our clue as far as where we need to go. And then from there, we can figure out the appropriate X coordinates and just kind of go from there. So first things first, let's try and gather our bearings here. Let's see where we're at. So we've got these different tower spots. You just want to focus on the Y coordinates right now. That's what matters the most. And from what I'm seeing here, keep in mind, these will be out of order. Just so you guys are aware. 
Now I am seeing, I think, there is a couple Y coordinates that are standing out to me, but they're for rally points, unfortunately, not um, what I was hoping for. Yeah, some of these rally points, they're, they're the exact same thing for the Y coordinates. So that is unfortunate. Actually, quite a few of these, well, one of them looks similar. One is 377, the other two are 33, or excuse me, 337. That's not what I'm interested in. I'm looking for a specific set of y, uh, y coordinates. If you get to wave flags here, this little chunk of code, you've gone too far. You're past the point of no return. I'm just kidding. You can absolutely scroll up and return to where you need to be. Uh, but basically, the way that this works is the X coordinate goes from left to right. But what's interesting about the Y coordinate is it actually goes from bottom to top. So the bigger the number the higher up on the screen it's actually going to be for the x-coordinate. I don't know if that makes sense. I wish I could draw on the screen right now, but unfortunately I can't. But yeah, as I'm seeing right now, I think just looking at the holder y-coordinates, it's so hard to keep track of everything. So we've got 169, 202, 221, 299, 266, 408, 318, and then 301. I think there was another 301 here somewhere. So let me scroll back up. Again, we're mostly just focusing on the Y coordinate underneath the holder. And this is good practice. You're going to want to get good at doing this if you guys want to have an understanding of where your towers are eventually going to end up. You use the other coordinates of the other towers as kind of a reference point to just try and go from there. So alternatively, we could also go by the X value instead of the Y value, but... Uh, that is admittedly somewhat difficult to do. So yeah, let's see. 169, 202, 221, 299, 266, 408, 318, and 301. I think it, the 301 and the 299 are the closest, if I'm reading this correctly. There is also 318, which is relatively close. But I think the 299, what is it, 169, 202, 221, 299. Yeah, this this is one of our towers. And then the other one is somewhere down here. Where is it? 301. Okay, so of those two, the X coordinate 478 is further to the left. So this is what we're going to try and I think base our tower spot off of. So what we're actually going to go ahead and do, we're going to copy this. Worst case scenario, if we end up putting this in the wrong spot, we could just kind of adjust the coordinates from there. But we're just going to put the tower on the map and see where it ends up as a, you know, we go. So first things first, you have your holder. Now, this is where the actual tower is going to spawn at these particular X, Y coordinates for that tower spot. What is this rally point range code underneath, you ask? Essentially... Every single tower, when you build a barracks on that particular tower spot, does not matter what kind of barracks it is, whether it is a Dark Knights, Orc Warrior Dens, Elite Harassers, does not matter what it is. Essentially, this is the default rally spot that all of those soldiers will go to. But the thing is, that you need to keep in mind, those soldiers will go to that rally point no matter where it is on the map. So I can change this value to be something ridiculous and completely and utterly off the path. The soldiers will rally to that specific set of coordinates absolutely no matter what. So when you build a new tower, what you want to do is think about where the rally point, the default rally point is going to be in relation to the rally range of the tower itself. Now what I like to try and do is make it so that no matter where I put a new tower spot, if I'm gonna put a new tower spot, obviously it's gotta be close enough to the road so that when I adjust the rally point, X and Y coordinates, the units will always end up in the middle of the path, but in a way that makes sense with the rally range of the barracks tower itself. Now, of course, if you're just somebody who's already modded or changed your barracks towers to have infinite or global rally range for your barrack troops, then I guess that really isn't an issue. But keep in mind that this default rally point will allow them to spawn off of the path, and they will stay there until they die or until you change the rally point again. Now, you can only change the rally point to a point on the path, you cannot change it to something off of the path, at least as of right now that I'm aware of. If there's somebody who's found a way to do that, be my guest. Let me know in the comment section below. But as of right now, I have not. So if you change any rally point for any barracks squad after they go to their designated default rally point, they will only allow valid selections. Unless, again, somebody's come up with a way to do that. But in any case, 
I digress. So we're not going to worry about this right now. Um, but I actually will leave the rally point coordinates here the same, just so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. Uh, but it's going to look a little weird because they're going to go outside the rally range of the actual tower itself, because this is going to be the default coordinates. You'll understand what I'm talking about later on. In any case, back to the original point of the video, which is to create the new tower spot. We need to adjust the holder's X and Y coordinates, which is 478 and 301. So what we're going to do is make this number, I believe, slightly bigger. So let's do, instead of 301, let's try 351. And then for the X coordinate, I'm only going to adjust it slightly to the left. So we're going to take off probably about those 8 pixels right there. Or whatever unit of measurement nodes that, you know, their gaming engine uses to identify this particular you know, tower spot, etc. on the coordinates grid. But in any case, with that change made, ladies and gents, we can go ahead and save our work. Control save. I'm just going to minimize both of these windows here, and we're going to reopen the game and see where our tower spot ended up. And if we go into any save file that we have here, it will reflect in all of the different save files, just much like with any other thing that you mod in this game. If we go into level 1 now, we should see a new tower spot. And yes, there it is. Okay, a little bit ugly. Not quite where I was thinking it was going to end up, but actually not too bad. Pretty darn good, if I do say so myself. It's not overlapping with any of the other tower spots. Uh, I'd be curious to see what that actually would look like, to be frankly honest, but I have not made such an egregious error as of yet. I'm pretty good at guessing coordinates as far as how big things need to be, where they're going to end up, that sort of thing. So, with these tower spots here, you can see I can obviously build a barracks point right here. And you're going to see that the barracks is auto set to rally to this point. Keep this in mind, because now I'm going to sell this tower. If I build a barracks right here, you're going to see those barracks are going to spawn to this exact same default rally point. And to be honest, with this thing's range, this is an acceptable spot to leave it as. If we want to change this, all you have to simply do is go into the file, the same one that we just did, and change where the rally point default X and Y coordinates are going to be. You can set it so that it's further up along the path if you want your barracks troops to, like, say, spawn back here. Although, you know, honestly, this is a pretty good spot. Yeah, and on, <laughs> there's a lot of good tower spots that we can build here. But again, this does look very cramped. So what if we want to adjust this even further? All you have to do is go to the holder X and Y coordinates and adjust those accordingly. So, but to demonstrate this, um, let's go ahead and just get a reference point here for where these guys are going to end up. So it's about roughly here. So if I go back and, you know, if we exit out of the game, I'm just going to keep a mental note of where this is in my head. Uh, so ideally, what we want to probably do is shift this about roughly this far up and this far to the left so that the barracks spawn around about here in the middle of the pathway. We'll see if we can get them to do what we want them to do. But just to show you guys what I'm referring to, let's go ahead and exit out of here. Let's go back and open this up right here real quick. And now we need to adjust the rally point X and Y coordinates. So again, just very, very mild slight changes, nothing crazy. But what we're going to do is adjust this 383 to 380. And then we're going to bump up the Y coordinate, I think, to something round about... Hmm, let's think here. Something tells me, like, around 340 should be good. But, again, this is just for testing purposes. We'll see how far I'm off. Now that I've saved my work, we're going to go ahead and reopen the game real quick and see what we've got. So if we go back into level 1 here, our tower spot will be in the same place as we left it last time because we haven't adjusted the holder coordinates yet. Although, again, I probably should. Okay, and now if I build a Dark Knights right here, yeah, you can see they're slightly further up the pathway. And if I build another tower here, these guys end up slightly further down here. So this was kind of close to what I wanted. Not exactly the same thing, but close enough to the point where I'm kind of satisfied with this thing as is. If you want to kind of center this more, all you got to do is just adjust the X coordinates. Of course, this is just the default rally range, so as long as you get your units on the path, from that point on, you can basically just rally these things wherever you want to, so you don't have to worry about that too much. But if you're worried about the default rally position, just go ahead, go into the code, and change that yourself. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's about going to do it for the end of today's episode. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know down in the comment section below what you guys want to see more of or next as far as this modding tutorial series is concerned for Kingdom Rush Vengeance. 
and I will hopefully catch all of you in the next YouTube video or live stream. This is Pollux the Wise saying peace out.